Everyone wants to know, um, a lot of times, you know, what makes us do what we do. Why Bigfoot? Um, why paranormal? Really, I guess you could ask anybody that question, why I do anything. Um, for me, it really does go to just uh, trying to prove it. Um, you know, growing up, my family was, well, to say we were poor would, would, would say the least, but uh, we didn't have a lot of material things, and we lived uh, at the time uh, way back off of Iredell County uh, down in Mooresville um, on an old farm. And, you know, back then, Mooresville was not what it is today. And as far as the eye could see, it was either fields or forests. And uh, my mother, God bless her, uh, was a great storyteller, or is one still. And my father, um, I guess, is the reason why I like to tell stories today uh, and to get people drawn in to believe in our mission. Uh, my father would tell me just uh, some of the scariest stories of his childhood growing up and haunted houses and different things like that and so I've always had those things instilled in me and then comes the movie Boggy Creek, the foul monster, foul Arkansas. I know everybody's seen that old cheesy B flick and you know as an adult I look back at it and I see it's a little bit hokey in the way it's filmed but it doesn't take away from the people who are trying to tell their story and I, I just always had a curiosity growing up why would you go on television and tell something like that and you couldn't prove it? And then here we are on television and different media outlets trying to prove our story. Um, strictly by happy chance would I ever meet Rex Lale. Uh, through his brother Obi, um, all these are really good men, uh, and Teddy. Um, I got invited on just a Bigfoot hunt, and I'll be the first one to tell you that I called bunk. I, I, I just, it's too fantastic, it just can't be. So we went back and forth and we argued a little bit, and Obi says, if I can get you on the invite, will you go? Absolutely. So several weeks passed by, to be honest with you, I honestly thought it was another bunch of just hooey, uh, hot water, or you know, hot air from Obi, just you know, being funny. And then he comes into work and uh, he says, "Hey, uh, they got your number, and when your phone rings, all they ask is you to be ready to go any given day of the week or time of night." And I said, "Okay." So uh, I had no idea what I was getting into. So in the middle of the week, my phone rings at about 9.30 and says, you need to be at this address uh, no later than 11 o'clock. So off I go. And I come up and I meet Rex, um, very, very interesting man, very Christian uh, man. So automatically I'm skeptical going, you know, okay, how can these people be so passionate about a creature that, that is just legend and lore. It's mythical. And, you know, and they seem to be very serious about what they're doing. So after I saw the footprint that they had cast uh, up in Kazar, man, seeing that print in person is, uh, it's something, it changes your mind. So I'm thinking, so Rex, we're, we're actually going to be going into the forest to, to see or try to see the creature that left this print. He, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So off we go. And um, we, we, I don't know, we must have been in there for hours. I know it was so late that I was struggling to keep up as far as, you know, just keeping my eyes open and knowing I had to go to work the next morning at seven o'clock. I, I was not real happy about the wasted evening. And I don't know what time of night, but I, it was late and you know, uh, Rex is there, uh, Adam is there, uh, Daniel is there, and, <clears throat> and me. And they're all doing their thing, and I'm very quiet and reserved. You know, I, I don't mind speaking when asked, 
but I'm an invited guest, so I don't want to moon or horn in on their uh, hunt, if you will. But I did pay attention to how they conducted themselves. So Rex said, you know what, I, I guess we're gonna pack it up for the night. And so fear of leaving, I guess, I, I asked for Rex, I said, you know, I heard you guys call all night. I said, can I try to give a yell? And he said, sure, so he cuts his camera on, he starts rolling, and I give my big, you know, kind of an imitation of a, of a siren, a fire whistle, if you will, going off, and it's loud, it's long, brother, it carries. And when I got done with it, you could hear echo off the South Mountain. And then off in the distance, it goes to coyotes. And this, this, this jackass or donkey starts yawning way off over the mountain. And all of a sudden, you hear this big, long, drawn out return call. Just like that. And I looked at Rex and I thought, what is that? Because it's a Sasquatch. And here I am. It didn't take but one time hearing the creature make a sound that I can't hardly describe. And I don't do it justice trying to imitate it. But I, I am, I was the most hard school, hard or skeptic that the group has. Um, and I haven't lost that uh, uh, sentiment when I go on the hunt because if I can if I can debunk evidence, I want to debunk it. But I, 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 I've seen too much. I've heard too much. Uh, every sense about a person that can be ignited uh, through Sasquatch hunting it's almost spiritual, if you will. There is something spiritual about being out in the woods with something that you know has the ability to see you and you can't see it and move it at speeds that are unfathomable. We can't, we can't mimic it. I can't keep up and I've chased it several times. Um, my hope is truly one day to be able to show y'all a video like this and go, we want to show you what we found. Look at our video of Sasquatch. And it'll be the end all video. It'll be the end all question. There will be no more anyone who can refute that it is real. And that I want everyone to believe as we do. Bigfoot's real. It's a real creature. From the skeptic who once couldn't believe, who now has no other choice. That's why I'm a believer.